Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. We've got another exciting episode of Security Matters for you today. Uh, my guest today is amazing. I think you're going to love her story. Uh, Liz Bacchus <laughs> is with us. She's an engineer with Integrated Security Technologies in Honolulu. Liz, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you on today. Thank you for having me, Andrew. Hello. No worries. Well, I saw your story in the uh, Women in Security Forum Spotlight. Paul Ragusa had you in there as an interview. So I thought we'd get a little deeper. You know, you can do a little bit in print, but live we can get a little more of your story. So um, let's introduce you to the industry and um, maybe give us uh, your history, you know, as much as you'd care to share. We don't all put everything out there on social media these days, but um, give us give us what you can and then we'll we'll roll from there. Sure. Um, let's see, how far back do I want to go? <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I was originally born in the Philippines and my family and I moved to New York City at age eight. Wow. And so, you know, growing up in New York City, but still growing up in like Filipino values, I'm, I'm Filipino. Anyway, with that di type of diversity, that's always been, you know, a center point in my up upbringing basically, right? So traditional Filipino values and the melting pot of New York City. Anyway, long story short, um, I did get sent back to to the Philippines for my high school um, oh. education, just so my you know my mother was like it was really important to her for us not to forget our our you know history and culture or whatever. To come back for college um, during college, 9/11 uh, uh, happened, mm. and I was kind of inspired. You know, about four or five years later, I was like, you know what, I really want to do something. You know, besides my formal education, I wanted to get more uh, knowledge and, and just want to be out there and help help the community. I, I just want, it was like a call to action. So I joined the Navy uh -huh. and I was in the Navy as a electric electrician's mate. And I was, my contract was for eight years, but I did four active duty, four inactive. After that, um, I went to school, I continued my education, but this time instead of in New York, I continued it in San Diego where I was last stationed, uh -huh. basically never left. Um, uh, went to school with University of Phoenix, which, by the way, shout oh, out to yeah. University of Phoenix <laughs> nice. for giving me some swag for this interview. Um, uh, got my bachelor's and my master's, and during that time, I was working um, in the uh, defense industry with BAE Systems, ship repair, okay. and then I got married, and my wife's active duty Navy. She's a uh -huh. lieutenant commander select now weapons officer for uh, a destroyer. Um, she got stationed here. So that's when I started looking around for jobs here in Hawaii and here I am, <laughs> she's, she's on deployment right now. So that's a quick rundown of my <laughs> life story, I guess. Wow, it's amazing. So how was it to go back to the Philippines for high school after, after going, I guess you went to grade school in New York, right? Yeah, um, so it was, it was a little bit of a shock a culture shock in the sense that I was trying to starting to relearn, you know, the language. I mean, I, sure. we still spoke it at home, but just, you know, like the whole like slang, you know, it's teenage years. Yeah. So it's like slang words in, in the native tongue, if you will. And like just the culture, too, is so completely different, very conservative Catholic. I mean, I went mm -hmm. to Catholic school my whole life with the exception of college. So okay. like it was still a, a shock because my mom um, in, in Filipino, you know, traditional conservative Catholic standards is still very progressive. So it was, it was trying to relearn, you know, navigate as a teenager who, by the way, is LGBT going back to something like that, which my yeah, family knew, you know, I was LGBT and stuff, but like, yeah, it was, it was interesting, but not in a, in a bad way. It was good. It was good growth for me for sure. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, uh, was it a big school? Yeah. It's actually one of like the, prestigious oh. schools in Cebu city. Um, oh. yeah, it's, it's, uh, they have like, like an all encompassing education, uh, level. So it's just like kindergarten to all the way to college. Wow. So that campus was huge. Wow. Yeah. I was fortunate yeah. to visit. Um, we did some volunteer work when I was in the Navy, uh, out there and went to some of the Cebu? schools and they, the, I, I don't think it was in Cebu. It was, um, Manila. I'm gonna have to remember the city, but it was so interesting because the kids put on like shows for us and they were so oh. professional. And I was like, oh my gosh, these kids That's are amazing. That's a thing, yeah. Yeah, it was really good. I was like, oh, so we didn't expect that, right? They were just yeah, very, that's a I thing. think, grateful. We were like delivering supplies. And so it was um, it was interesting. That's so cool. I, I, lo I love it that, uh, that you ended up in the Navy. So 
tell, tell me about, so was 9-11, did, did, was your family impacted by that? Or was it, uh, or were you, did you have, uh, did somebody that you worked that you knew? I mean, that was a, that was a major event if you lived in New York. It was a major event for the country. Yes, definitely. Um, my mother, she's a registered nurse and my stepdad oh. is a doctor. So when oh, wow. 9-11 happened, um, anyway, so it's, it's pretty intense because like we lost wow. communication, could not contact any of them because all the, you know, the, the major towers, yeah. comms towers were on, on those towers. So like there was no communication, like people were, you know, this was at a time where cell phone use was not like prevalent. And yeah, so, and even then, even if you had a cell phone, you know, you couldn't communicate. So for like hours on end, we didn't know what happened to everybody, where is everyone. Wow. And, you know, emergency services, as you know, like emergency services was called up to go. And then that's when things collapsed. So it's, it was just very crazy. So yeah, we were impacted wow. in a, like in a, not like personal sense where, you know, somebody, you know, passed due to it, but it was definitely a, you know, a, what is that? It sears in your memory. How like you felt? Traumatic, sure. Like Almost a traumatic yeah. event for you guys, for your family. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think most so New Yorkers crazy. can attest to that too. I think even yeah. if they're not, you know, they don't have family in the medical field because just all of the comms towers just went down. So you wow. couldn't contact your family, and it was crazy. It was a crazy time. We didn't know what was going on initially, right? So super scary. And so that got you got to thinking about a little bit of national pride and ended up in the navy so did you get did you meet a recruiter at school how, how did you get how did you pick on the navy how did that how did that come about honestly andrew i took like my own initiative to like look it up so i was like i want to join the military okay which is the best branch obviously navy yeah. after my my, <laughs> my research yeah. right i was like obviously like let me contact the recruiter and you know they're quick like once once you show interest boom recruiter calls me up he just so happens to be a native New Yorker too. So he's like, oh. Hey, come up to Harlem. You know, do you want me to come pick you up? You know how they are. They're like, they super cater to you. They're like, do you want me to pick sure. you up? I was like, no, nah, I'll take the train, man. It's cool. Like, <laughs> so I went nice. to, you know, straight up, like went to the recruiting office, like ask more questions. You know me, I'm like, I talk a lot and I ask a lot of questions. I ask so many questions. And then I was like, Hey, um, I, I'm satisfied. Like I really do want to sign up. And at this point I was already 21. So it wasn't like, I needed okay. a waiver to join or anything. I was already an adult going to college, part-time job, all that. But I was like, listen, can you please put a little nice little presentation for my mother? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I was the person to convince, um, not that I needed her again, not that I needed her, uh, you know, approval or anything, but it just, I, I, it would make me feel so much better that she didn't sure. worry about me while I was away. So yeah, and that, that rest is history. I signed up once my mom was convinced, of course, that took a while, but. <laughs> nice. And you said for eight years, so did you, uh, how did you pick your rate? And what rate were you? So I was an electrician's mate, so basically an electrician. EM, okay. Yeah, um, motor rewinder, specifically. Okay. So, oh. yeah, so um, uh, they, you know, they have you take the ASVAB, all that stuff, yeah. and they gave you, like, all these things that are available to you, and Again, if nobody knows what ASVAB is, it's a standardized, standardized test to basically assess, like, where do you belong? So they gave me a whole list of, like, rates, which is jobs in the Navy, to pick from and what is actually available to get shipped out within the next two, three weeks. Because I said, please, I need to get shipped out now before I change my mind and my mom changes her mind, <laughs> right? Okay. So they're like, okay, wow. okay, so this is what's available that's right now wow. that needs to be filled, billets, right? And I was looking at it and I was like, electrician, huh? That's so far removed to, uh, you know, from what I'm currently studying. And at the, at the time I was studying journalism. Okay, because, wow. You know, idealistic me at the time, I was really inspired by embedded journalists during the, the two wars, Iraq and Afghanistan war. So I was like, I really would like to, I don't know, convey that type of news to civilians or just the electorate, you know, the population. So we know where our sure. money's going, like, what are we funding? You know, are we good? Whatever, without getting too political there. But that was my, you know, that's what I was into at the time. So I was like, huh, well, let me learn being, to be an electrician in the Navy. And because that's so different. It's something new to learn. And I love learning. So I was like, let me do that instead. Because it was like, what was available, Andrew, was like firefighting in, on a ship, which was like, all right, cool. Um, what was the other ones? ET was available, which is electronics okay. technician, which, mm -hmm. you know, deals with this industry rather 
um, uh, I see which is internal communications again deals with this industry. So a lot there, a lot of it was like electronics, electric, electrician type work. So I was like, let me do electrician. Huh. And again, the rest is history. That's how it was. And so you went to, did you go to BWE? Did they still have that then? I had to go to B, basically BWE school for like 12 weeks. Oh, right that's called boot, right after now. Boot camp? Basic oh, okay. Engineering Common Core. And that's okay. actually stretched out to, yeah, it's still 12. Yeah, you're right. It's about two, two months, three months. Okay. And then you got to pick an A school of some type? Yes, sir. And that was the, um, crap, <laughs> I forget. Which A school was that? Yeah, Motor Rewind. No, that's a C school. Ah. What was my A school? No, you ah. don't get to pick it. It's just an automatic um, A school, automatic A school if you're an EM. So you have to I learn see. like basic EM instrumentation, calibration, reading, stuff ah. like that. So you learn how to use like a oscilloscope, a multimeter, stuff yeah. like that. So awesome. that was the A school. Mm -hmm. And then, and then did, did you got, we went by like the choice of order. So if you finished like first in the class and there were 20 students, you got your first, the first choice of the 20 sets of orders. Is that how it works? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's awesome. It's still like, it was still like that during the time. Um, and I did get to, to pick my first, you know, orders in, in my dream sheet. You know how they make you fill it out. Yeah. Like you said, if you're top, whatever, you're able to like, they, they, you know, do your dream wish or whatever wish list. So my wish list was Italy to be stationed ah. in Italy. So I got it. That was my oh, first wow. command. Yeah. Yep. Uh, nice. Mm -hmm. And was it shipboard or was it like a, a re maintenance facility? So it was a, so my first ship was the USS Emory S land AS 39. That is a um, subtender. So you okay. have a repair side and a ships force side. I was part of right. ships force. So okay. the repair side is what uh, supplies and repairs sub uh, submarines and whatever ships are alongside us so yeah. we were like the supply repair ship um, nice for all the yeah, other I spent, ships i spent some time in the persian gulf alongside you know we were on a, i was on a destroyer so we pulled up the you know a destroyer tender right similar big oh. old ships those things were huge destroyer tenders yeah same same, uh, same see, thing I, yeah never knew those existed that's cool yeah i i, I okay. guess they tend maybe tend to all ships i don't know but they did you know they Huh. They were, it was like 560 foot. It was huge, you know, compared to us. Yeah, great stuff. So, uh, well, I got my, uh, I was second in my class. So I, but the first guy wanted to stay in Virginia. So I, I just, I wanted to go to Hawaii. I really did. You know, like I, I grew up in Kentucky and you, people there save their whole life to come out here for two weeks. So I was like, I'm going to be going to Hawaii. And uh, I didn't know how I would get here, but, but I did. So that was kind of, that was my, awesome. my lucky story to, to end up in Hawaii. <laughs> Um, so after, after, uh, Italy, did you, did you, was that like a two-year tour, four-year tour? It was supposed to be a five-year tour, but oh. since the ship was going to get, um, turned over to MSC, which is your civilian counterparts of the U.S. Navy, military Navy, mm -hmm. um, they said, Hey, you have the option. You can stay here or you can go to another ship. And mm -hmm. I was like, heck yeah, I want to go to another ship. I want to learn more. I want to see more. I want to see something different. Cause this was a steamship, so I wanted like a more up to date ship, like ah, gas okay. turbine or or diesel, yeah. right? So I was like, yes, sign me up for the next ship. I want San Diego. Oh, you got choice. Did you give a choice when they decommed it? That's awesome. Good for you. So then San Diego, huh? Well, let's. I tell you what we'll do. We're gonna take a break. We'll stop. With, we'll pause with San Diego, and then we'll come back uh, with Liz Bacchus. Uh, Liz, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll be right back, folks. Stick around.
Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters. We're talking with Liz Bacchus, and we've been through her history, which is, I think, amazing and inspiring. And she's finally on the way to San Diego, still in the Navy, headed to her second ship. I want to learn, what, what were all these skills that you were picking up along the way? So along the way, uh, obviously, as an electrician, you know, onboard shipboard electrician, I was able to learn, you know, major mechanical systems like main propulsion, auxiliary stuff, so pumps, motor controllers, you know, taking apart the engine and the ancillary stuff, <laughs> generators and ancillary stuff of that. So going from a steamship, which was the old ship, right, that I was talking about my first ship, to like a smart ship, which is the LPD-18 USS New Orleans, um, it is a diesel ship. So now you have a smart system where things are communicating to each other. You have a console now that actually says, hey, these sensors are indicating that this cylinder or whatever in your generator is messing up. Go check it out, whatever, right? So now that's where the electronics um, part, uh, the knowledge about electronics really got a foothold in my, you know, in my brain. I was like, this is so interesting because usually the ETs and the IC men would be handling that. But in mm. my second ship, they gave me free reign just because, you know, in the Navy, when they see somebody that wants to learn, mm -hmm. you know how it is, right? <laughs> uh, like, oh, this person, they're motivated. Let's let's give them all the jobs while the others are, you know, kind of slacking off. It's okay because she's, <laughs> she's here like <laughs> sometimes, unfortunately. So it, it was cool, though, that they allowed me to do that because I learned so much mm -hmm. working with the ETs and the IC men. And that's when I learned about, you know, logic boards, PLCs. Uh, reading sensors. So that, that the electronic side right there is where I learned it from. Mm -hmm. And when I became a civilian, um, going to like the software portion of my job as a systems engineer, where you use, you know, um, computer aided design, AutoCAD, for example, um, when okay. I started, when I worked for uh, BAE systems in ship repair industry, um, I had to, I was a tech writer. So I had to kind of oh. be a, an SME of sorts for systems that I was writing procedures for, right? Gotcha. And from cradle to grave, I was kind of involved in, in a sense. So part of that was putting together work packages and creating these 3D drawings or floor plans or layouts to help out the technicians in doing their job. So, hey, oh. if you're gonna put, put together a pump or take it apart or clean it, you know, here are the things that you need to do and this is what it'll look like. You know what I mean? Because sometimes mm -hmm. uh, as comprehensive as Navy tech manuals are, they're old. Like they're, some mm -hmm. of them are sure. dated from like 70s, you know, 80s. Some of them are no longer like relevant or they are still as mm -hmm. far as the procedure goes, but the drawings in them are no longer mm -hmm. relevant to the new stuff that's already on our ships today. So I would put together these CAD drawings. Uh, most of them would be 3D so that, that you know, the text would know how to you know, put it together, put it up, t take it apart, what measurements to take, you know, where to take the measurements, you know, what are your parameters that it's passing or failing and criterion. So that, that was the AutoCAD I learned, I got certified uh, through that job with BAE systems. Wow. So that's both that's with uh, Inventor, which is 3D and AutoCAD, which is 2D. So yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. So that, um, that's, there's so much sort of precision and detail in the Navy, you know, we had, yeah, uh, they, you know, all of our maintenance processes, everything's down. You, you never had to really think about what to do. You were told what to do all the time and it was laid out for you exactly how to do it, except maybe troubleshooting when something broke. But our, I, I remember the, the, the depth of the manuals, but also the, the lack mm -hmm. there'd be things that were wrong with them, you know, definitely. And so I, I do remember, come, especially when we started troubleshooting and we'd find out, hey, this, this isn't actually like this. So that's amazing. I'm glad the Navy continues to, to do that stuff for the sailors out there. So you got to our industry coming, which is a little, we're on the applied side of, of the industry, right? I mean, so we're taking a, someone's desire, someone's what they think they want. Sometimes they actually know what they want as well. And we've got to turn that into a solution set that sort of addresses their concerns from a security perspective. Right. How, how, how did you find drawing sort of a dream versus something that was hard and, you know, uh, uh, actual pump, like a pump's a known thing versus turning, you know, a, uh, from someone's ideas into a set of security system drawings. How's that been for you? Or what's your, what's your opinion of sort of that process? Well, again, I credit Richard Arguelles, which is my mentor in this industry. <laughs> when I first joined the company, I bothered him and bugged him and so many times, <laughs> you know, sh shadowed him in his job, like just to learn 
you know, I already have the fundamentals of ele electrical and electronic theory, of course, sure. from my previous experiences and knowledge base, right? So I just needed to learn what this was about, this particular access control, uh, IDS, CCTV, all that stuff, which I had like, you know, bare, bare minimum knowledge of and applied all the other knowledge and put them all together and learn, right? So essentially, he made it very easy for me to understand. And I did tell Christine, um, I told her, if you're going to hire me, please put me in with a really, really great like instructor or someone that can teach me the ropes because I won't disappoint. I'll learn that really quick. So she didn't fail me. Richard didn't fail me. So <laughs> that's how it worked was just, just watching him. And, uh, and, you know, he gave me the, the steps on how to, like you said, like somebody telling you verbally, like, this is how I want it to look, you know, this is how I want it to work. And then us coming in and going, huh, <laughs> how is that going to be uh, like cost effective and also like exactly how they want it, right? Mm -hmm. Within budget, whatever. So I couldn't tell you detail, like the steps it took, but it's essentially, yeah, it's essentially like drawing something and putting it into a 3D plane. There's so many aspects you have to think about. And as far as training to understand how to get to that point, like what, giving the customer what he or she wants. Um, you know, I took a lot of certification classes and uh, in those classes, they actually tell you like basic steps, you know, hey, if they want forensic, you know, like at this height, it should be this, or if there's motion, lots of traffic, you know what I mean? Like those things are considered. There's so many in-betweens that you have to consider, mm. you know what I mean? To get to, to that point where here, customer, here's the thing you asked for. And they're like, yes, that is mm. exactly what I asked for. Yeah, I could, I could spend like 30 minutes just breaking that down, but I'm not gonna, but yeah, definitely certifications, <laughs> Certifications help, and um, these manufacturers and their certification classes and their just classes in general, amazing. Wow. Like they, so they were great. Yeah, that that's awesome that somebody you know with a as long as you have that basic background in electronics, right? The door sort of open for our industry to bring you in and train you. And you've um, how long have you been working in the security industry? Oh my, it hasn't even been. Let's see, it was a year for me back in August last year. So about oh, wow. a year and a half. So a year, a year and a half, and you're like a lead engineer already. So that I think all that experience that you had must have played well, and then I, and to your point of being able to learn quickly and then being hungry to learn, right? So that's just a good lesson I think for folks that are interested in that that level of work, because not not everyone has the uh, sort of adaptability to pick up the the detail that's necessary on the engineering side, but it's a very rewarding part of our business. Absolutely, um, and keeps keep the salespeople straight too, right? A lot of them don't. Um, <laughs> aspire to that level of detail I'll, I'll just leave leave it there to be as gentle as possible and then so they need that that guidance right along the way you know what i'm saying from from an engineering team so sure, how, how absolutely. do you find how do you find the industry collaborating like when you when you've been had to go visit with a customer is it do you go with the salespeople or is it is it with a project manager how, how does um how's sort of the way that you work how's that um how do you get to communicate i guess let's put it let's just ask that question Sure. Um, so before I got into this hybrid role of systems engineer and project manager, which is what we call FedGov project engineer now, um, I was still just a systems engineer. So I would go mm -hmm. and do site walks with the salespeople or a salesperson and actually have face-to-face -face time with a customer. So I'm there. There's no, nothing lost in translation from the account yeah. manager, you know, relaying that information to me. I'm actually there listening and understanding the needs of the customer so yes, I would be at these site walks. Um, I mean, if they were, if these site walks weren't as like big or whatever, I mean, the salesperson, I gave full, you know, confidence because, you know, at the point, you know, when I started in the industry, they knew more than me. So I was more confident in their knowledge at the time. If anything, sure. I was shadowing Richard, you know, this was in the beginning, but now um, as a systems engineer, when, you know, they had confidence in me, I had my certs, I, I knew a little bit of the industry. I understood my job, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I would go with the with the account manager, do the site walk, take all the notes, keep in all the ceilings or what have you if needed, all that stuff. And then same thing with being a project engineer now for the Fed side. Same thing. Um, again, cradle to grave with a project pre-sale all the way down to close out, involved in every step of the way. So nice. I don't know if and that explained it. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that the folks in our industry can appreciate that, that, you know, that that type of vision. I mean, a lot of our uh, your projects are complex. And so they really require, I think, that visibility from cradle to grave, like you said, sure. to make sure that the final deliverable, the final as built packages accurately reflects what what was done in the field. And, you know, there's field changes and all that stuff, as we know about. Um, 
did the uh, did the um, initial um, sort of uh, I guess I'll ask it another way. When now that you have you know done all the work that you've done, how do you think that that compares in in sort of complexity to the work that you did, say on you know on the shipboard drawings and all that type of work? Honestly, um, and not to like undermine like the complexity of our industry. I mean, I was dealing with electromechanical systems on board a ship, and it wasn't even just that. It was in conjunction with welding, machining. Um, uh, like ancillary stuff, like flushing, you know, systems. So you had to, co you know, consider all these other things working at the same time uh, and know about them and know the regs, you know, per federal whatever's state, federal regulations, and then also know the system itself. So um, compar compared to my previous job to now, I would say that this job was a lot more, you know, for anybody to pick up, like it'd be a lot more easier for someone new to pick up. And it was easier for me to learn, I would think, um, because and at my previous job, you know, coming as an coming in as an in, uh, you know an engineering background as an electrician in the Navy, I had to still learn what welding was. I still had to learn machining. You know, there mm -hmm. was a lot of other like jobs that were happening in conjunction with mine that I had to learn their requirements and their start, stop, end dates and whatnot, all that stuff to consider. Meanwhile in this industry, because it is electronics, electronics makes things so much easier. It's just electricity, <laughs> right? Um, that That's, you know, to me, just a little bit heavier on the complexities at my previous industry than, than this one, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we've got a minute or so left, Liz. What would you tell somebody that's looking at our industry, thinking about engineering, maybe they're already in our industry and, and interested in what you do? Uh, what kind of advice would you give to them? Definitely go for it. I you know, we've talked about this before the show started, but I definitely was not aware of how great this industry was and how, like, as far as mobility goes and career, how, like, wow, like, there's so many opportunities, not even just systems engineering or project management or sales, but there's so many things you can do. IT, um, definitely, if you're looking into it, you know, talk to someone who has been in the industry a while. I was fortunate enough that I'm with a group of people, you know, with IST, that just are so knowledgeable, have an extensive, you know, experience and, and just everything, like I, everything I needed to learn, I learned from them. Right. <laughs> so it's like, it answered, they answered all my questions. You know, it wasn't just Richard. It was a whole bunch of the team that like basically I bugged them and just asked questions and they were so open to answer. Um, I also found this is on a personal note. I also found that in this industry, or at least the company that um, ISC, there was not a lot of like, I don't know. Um, what is this? Like there's comp competitiveness, healthy competition, but it wasn't like cutthroat to the, to the sense where people are keeping knowledge to themselves. Oh. People were always so available to impart that knowledge, you know, at least with this company. And I'm assuming just in the security industry in general, I guess, um, in my previous industry, and it wasn't just with BAE, I felt like in general, people were very cutthroat. Like, wow. unless you were in the, in their little clique or whatever, mm. they were not very free in sharing um, information. So that's why when I'm talking about mobility with, with access to information and just career, you know, going up, g trying different hats, wearing different hats, I feel like the security industry has a lot of opportunity for whatever there you're you looking for or whatever your passion is. So do the search, Perfect. do formal education, talk to someone about it, get into Perfect. it. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Yeah. We're a caring industry. We're a sharing industry. Join us. Liz, thanks yes. so much. It was a great interview. I'm glad I finally got you on the show, and I look <laughs> Thanks, forward to Andrew. seeing you again soon. Take care of yourself. Take Thank care, you everybody. So much. Aloha.